when of course there is a body of literature, a whole body of literature out there that's, that basically um, indicates that if kids are physically active, they actually do better in school, that it improves in performance to allow and actually promote children to be physically active. And so one of the studies that I do, we do something called classroom exercise breaks, and we give the teachers cards with two to five minute activities on them so that at any point in the day they could pull out a card and do an activity. And the scientific evidence is that you can do it in small increments. If you need your 30 minutes a day or 60 minutes a day, you can do it in 10 minute bouts and that's fine, even smaller ones really, as long as you're moderately to vigorously active, getting the heart rate up. The little bits can add up through the day. You don't have to do it all in one session. And so that's why we promote these small activity breaks for kids. Wakes them up again too and they can pay attention to the next lesson. So, so important to get that physical activity in and, um, and it starts in childhood and if you can start it there and keep it going. Children that haven't had the opportunity to learn about food choices or children that haven't had the opportunity to learn about how important exercise is, a good place to get that is at school. We've got to look at what we can do at school that is best for that child's health, for all the children at that school. It is real critical that we start very early in teaching our students good nutrition. Students spend the majority of their day at school and school-related activities. In order to make schools healthy places for students to learn and grow, the federal government has mandated that every school system write and implement a local wellness policy. These policies are intended to improve the environment for children in school as it relates to nutrition and physical activity. They must set guidelines for nutrition education, physical activity, and all foods available during the school day. Now, it's not just about health. It's about academics, and it's about a whole child. And a child who's healthy, a child who eats, eats well, plays hard, is a child that's going to do better in school. It's not just teaching a child in the classroom, but what's happening in the hallway, and what's happening in the gym class, and what's happening with exercise, and what's happening in the cafeteria, and what teachers are doing. We have to look at really the entire purpose of education or the process of schooling. Uh, and when we do that, we really look at that as a, a whole child experience. At this school, this is the fewest amount of behavior problems I've ever had. And I, I attribute that to one of the factors as our healthy policy and the physical activities of them burning off that nervous energy. Yeah, we weren't just worried about academics worry about the whole child. Within the two weeks, over the uh, time with the children on the playground, our discipline referrals have been almost totally eliminated, and that's quite a bit. A healthier and better society is within reach. But we haven't always understood how important physical education is in this program. And there was a time when we didn't understand that even the youngest children need help and guidance in their physical activity just as they do in their other studies. I tell you folks, those kids aren't getting physical education, and they aren't getting it in the high school either. Oh, come on now, Jet. Those buildings are the best that money can buy. Sure, but Henry, walk past that elementary school every day like I do, and watch most of those kids just standing there with nothing to do. You'll think different. Well, what do you want them to do? Too young to do much of anything. Are they too young to learn how to play, Mr. Taylor? Of course not. As so many communities have found out, if each child is to make the most of himself, then all need direction in physical activity and a program that's organized with every type of youngster in mind. And suppose you could put many years of games and sports activities before your eyes in a matter of a few seconds. You would know that this is so much more than just play or keeping them busy. For games are as much a part of education as learning how to read and write. Even the simplest games are learning experiences for the very young children. And as the games become more advanced, they call into play more and more of the skills that children have learned in other parts of their physical education work. From their rhythmic activities come timing and coordination. From self-testing comes a sense of balance, strength, endurance, and the ability to do things with their bodies that more vigorous games demand.
But if you could watch a well-directed physical education program in action, you'd see that the games are taught so that all of the children, regardless of size or physical type or particular talents, get a chance to play. In a good physical education program, their activities are intended to set up a spirit of team play that will be useful to the children in later life. Wherever they are, in college, at work, in community recreation programs, these children will be ready to pull their own weight as members of the team. But games are even more important than we parents realize because they are social activities and they must be played with others according to rules that are the same for all, in many cases for boys and girls alike. Think of what learning about the rules of play means to a young man or woman who must soon accept responsibilities and learn about the rules of work and of daily life. Games are educational experiences because they are one of the most important ways children have of finding out what it takes to live with other people, to win, to lose, to compete. Gradually, through games, they discover the meaning of good sportsmanship, fair play, equal opportunity. Ideals that go far beyond the playground in their significance for America. Medical research strongly supports the idea that childhood and adolescent obesity in America is in epidemic proportions. We have to do something. We have to, we have to change the way we're doing things now. We're going to lose children. It is time for communities to work together 